Well, friends, we are partway through the journey uh, that we've been on in launching our strategic plan for the next five years, follow 25. Uh, the key objective is to see 65% of St. Paul's identifying much growth in faith in the Lord Jesus over that time. Uh, as we've seen, the gospel of the Lord Jesus, the foundation of what it means to follow Jesus in all of life, and this God has graciously gifted us everything we need for, for that journey, the resources of Bible, prayer, the Holy Spirit, colleagues for the journey as we follow Jesus in all of life. But the Bible also reveals what it looks like to be a follower of Jesus Christ in all of life in actual practice. And one of the practices of a disciple is a life of radical generosity. And this includes the giving of financial resources to the support of the work of the gospel, impacting and shaping our corporate life here at St. Paul's and also through us, the lives of others. And so on Sunday, the 21st of March, we're going to pledge our financial support for the work of ministry at St. Paul's in the upcoming year as we pursue Follow 25 together. Now, it's something we do every vision series. Now, I do recognize, however, the practice of many churches is to, in fact, keep the process of financial stewardship a private matter. And so this may, in fact, be new to you. I am, however, convinced that the biblical precedent for public giving is overwhelming. In fact, there's only one verse in the entire Bible that appears to speak to secrecy in financial matters. It, you may be aware of it. It's Matthew 6 verses 1 to 4, where Jesus says, Be careful not to practice your righteousness in front of others to be seen by them. So when you give to the needy, he says, do not announce it with trumpets as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets to be honoured by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing so that your giving may be in secret. Now, Jesus isn't detailing the process by which the church offertory is to be collected and taken up over the next 2,000 years of church history. You see, if that was the case, then frankly, we'd break his instructions every single time we give. I mean, how many of us can write a check, set up a an electronic transfer, let alone take money out of our wallet and not know what the left hand, what the right hand's doing to be able to do it in, in secrecy. Every process requires my hand to be seen by myself or by someone else. You see, the core issue is Jesus addressing here in Matthew 6 is hypocrisy, play acting. The hypocrite gives in order to be praised by people. The hypocrite may in fact give in secret, but they make sure it's never kept a secret. They want to make sure that they get a reward for their good deed. They get it when others applaud them for what they've done. Remember the story of Ananias and Sapphira in Acts chapter 5? They sold a piece of property. They put, they put part of that, the proceeds of that, publicly at the apostles' feet. They were both struck down by God, not because they let one hand know what the other one was doing, but because they attempted to deceive the apostles and God. They were play acting. The Bible leads me to conclude that our giving is a spiritual issue. It's a discipleship issue for which there is accountability. Every year, the pledging process here at St. Paul's begins with the leaders. That's the, the staff and the parish council pledging first. The leaders must lead in commitment and accountability. And because this is a spiritual issue and not a financial one, I'm the only one who sees the pledge cards at St. Paul's as your spiritual leader. As we look to pledge our financial resources to C25, follow 25 advanced among us in the coming year, I would ask you in the weeks coming up to sit down again with the gospel God's radical generosity to you in the Lord Jesus and allow the gospel to fill your hearts until it overflows into a life of radical generosity.